Good evening, sir. I wonder if you could spare a minute. Oh, no, don't tell me. You're an unemployed young person who's decided to get on their bike, and you're here to give me the opportunity of buying a genuine Jurassic Park solid plastic tax disc holder for the bargain price No, no, I'm collecting for charity. I put a plastic bag and a card through your door yesterday to say we'd be round collecting unwanted clothes, yeah? Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry, some out there. There you go. I said charity, not the Victoria and Albert Museum. <laughs> it looks very nice on. Caught you out then. Hi. Hiya. What do you mean? We well, should have got rid of the visiting massage service a mite earlier, Gary. What was she doing walking up and down your back in a Doc Martin? She was from a charity. Oh, I didn't realise you were such a deserving cause. Been up in the loft, have you, eh? Yeah. Gonna be the next Elton John after all. Well, I'm not so sure, you know. On the one hand, there's the enormous wealth, the fame, the access to the world's finest hair weavers. On the other, you've got to watch Watford play every week. So, how was your open university course then? Are you officially clever? I'm officially brilliant. It was fantastic. I loved it. And I got a terrific reaction when I read my dissertation. Oh, yeah. It was entitled Fantasy, Reality and Obsession, a case study. It wasn't about me by any chance, was it? Asked her husband with a mixture of pride and trepidation. Oh, you're so vain. Although, since we're talking about people with a tenuous grip on reality, how long have you been cuddling your spiff suit? Oh, no, I wasn't cuddling it. I was trying to get rid of it. But it seems the George Raff look is not yet de rigueur in the third world. Oh? Does that mean the party's off? What party? The surprise 1940s theme party you said you were going to throw for my birthday. Yeah, well, it's not much of a surprise now, is it? I know. I'm sorry. I blew it. I've just been so wound up with my course. But now I've got through this stage, I can relax a bit more. We can do more things together. I can share your interests more. What are they this week? I'll knock it off, Yvonne. No, I mean it. I can understand why the 40s appeal so much. It's a time of certainties. A time when people knew what they were doing and why they were doing it. A time when men wore hats and women dyed their legs with cold tea. You're sending me up again, aren't you? Only a bit. And that dancing was really nice. You know, we did the foxtrot, oh. or the quick step, or whatever it was. Mm. I like it when the man takes the lead. Once in a while. <laughs> You're going to change your course from psychology to Paso Doble, are you? Don't be so prickly, Gary. No, I just thought maybe we could take dancing lessons together. Well, it'd give us a shared interest, an excuse, or a reason to hold each other more. It might improve our sex life, too. You think it needs improving? Well, I was talking to some of the girls on the course, and they said that the average... They're lying. <laughs> what are you doing here? No, don't tell me. The Martians have landed and they've sent you to get some change of planet cards. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ron. And that's supposed to make it all better, is it? I mean, what sort of a practical joker gets me to print him a set of wartime papers, says he can take me through to the past, and then leaves me stranded in the East End looking like a right div? <laughs> the last thing this world needs, and I mean the very last thing, is another Jeremy Beadle. <laughs> I mean, where did you disappear to? And don't say the Blitz, otherwise you'll be experiencing a sudden blackout. Look, I know you're not going to believe anything I say. I just wanted to thank you for not telling Yvonne. Yeah, well, I nearly did. But I don't believe in grassing on pals. Even ex-pals. Look, I know you've got the hump. The hump! <laughs> I've got enough hump to reform the Camel Corps! <laughs> and as for my hair, what there is left of it... I make Vinnie Jones look like a New Age traveller! <laughs> I think it looks very masculine. In a severe sort of way. <laughs> Don't take the Michael. Stella hates it. She used to love running her fingers through my hair. In fact, at the moment of maximum passion, she used to like to grab hold and hang on tight. But now, no hair equals no passion. So go on and get lost, I've got work to do. Now look, I've got something to show you. It's from 1940. Don't start. No, really. Look. Well. You're a printer. 
How old's that paper? 53 years or 53 hours? Well, you've either got a 1938 Hogue Grabtree hot metal press in your attic, or you really did go back. But why couldn't I? I don't know. Maybe it was because I didn't believe, didn't have enough faith. But next time... No, it can't be that. The first time I went back, I didn't know there was a back to go to. And there isn't going to be a next time. Phoebe walked out on me. And if Owen wants to make our marriage work, so maybe now's the time to start thinking about the present, you know? My wife, my mates. I understand. So do you fancy a bevy tonight, then? Can't tonight, Ron. I'm starting boring dancing classes. <laughs> Ta -da! <laughs> Don't panic. I think a card came through from one of those 24 hour psychiatrists. Low call out charge, no brain too small. No, yeah, just, just hide it for a laugh and stuff. Well, it's worked. <laughs> Gary, why do you always plunge into everything with this 150% over the top attitude? Oh, I don't know. It probably wasn't breastfed long enough. <laughs> or too long. Or too much from one side. Or... Oh, well, that explains one thing. Explains what? It doesn't matter. I'm not complaining. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they make synchronised swimmers look depressed. <laughs> Go on, then. Follow yeah. me. Right. That foot. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Go on, then. <laughs> <laughs> no, you've got to smile. You've got to go... <laughs> Often. Sometimes, but sometimes I have to fake it. <laughs> what do you do for a living? I'm an obsessive, oh. but I'm hoping to be promoted to a psychotic. <laughs> you? Assistant personnel manager and part-time sex goddess. Really? Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you do that then, evenings and weekends? Whenever I get the chance, really. Oh. Oh. That was super. Now, let's all try a basic tango. Mm. Fancy a basic tango? I bought another video, too. Oh. Well, I don't want to watch a martial arts film. It's not martial, my little dyslexic. It's marital. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah. You're after a bit of part-time work, eh? Huh? I might. I'll, uh, I'll just go upstairs and change into something a little more comfortable, shall I? Oh, yeah. Oh. As long as it's not your Acrolan Cardi and your carpet slippers. <laughs> old-age pensioner saw off the raiders by threatening them with her husband's World War II revolver. When we asked 80-year-old Phoebe Sparrow from Bethnal Green how she felt, she said, I lived through the Blitz. A couple of hooligans aren't going to get the better of me. Ron, this changes everything, don't you see? Why? 80-year-old Phoebe Sparrow. It must mean we got married. Not necessarily. She may have married somebody else with your surname. Or maybe she never met anybody else like you and started using your name in a wistful, nay, poignant attempt to keep alight the dying embers of your brief, unfulfilled relationship. But say, so we did get married, back in the 1940s. If I don't go back, I'm changing the course of history. But if you pursue that argument, you risk changing the course of history every time you do go back, don't you? Well, not really. This is my Grandpa Garrett's name on my ration book. So if anyone does check up, at least there's a Mr G Sparrow on the electoral roll. And what happens if somebody decides to pop round to your granddad's to visit you? Oh, come on, what are the odds on that? Plus, he spent most of the war on submarines. But if I don't marry Phoebe when I'm supposed to... Then why don't you just go round and visit this battling granny, see if she recognises you? I can't do that. The shock could kill her. You're going to have to cover for me. Well, so you can go back and marry Phoebe? Uh, she thinks I'm already married. To Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> What's the first name that came into my head? That, that's brilliant. Hey, hang about. Next time you go back, if anybody asks, you can show them a picture of your wife. <laughs> oh, my love. Marilyn. There you go. Thanks. So when are you going back? Well, I was thinking. England are playing in Lithuania tomorrow night, right? Now, I could say that you and me have been given tickets. OK. If she asks, I'll cover for you. No, you're actually going to have to go. Well, just in case Stella says something to Yvonne. But I don't want to go to Lithuania. <laughs> It'll 
It'll cost me a fortune. The beer will be garbage and the results a foregone conclusion. Shock win for plucky Lithuania. All right, I'll pay. Eh? If you go, I'll pay. Haven't you ever wanted a Lithuanian stamp in your passport? This is the first time England have played Lithuania, but no one in the England camp is taking the game lightly. Manager Graham Taylor is waiting to see if Paul Gascoigne passes a late fitness test on a stomach muscle strain. Yeah, of course, by stuffing himself with too much pasta and Newcastle Brown. <laughs> <laughs> still here? Uh, yeah, yeah, just off. Gonna pick up Ron on my way to the airport. I can't believe you're going. It's only a football match. I'm not defecting. Gary, the last time you went to see England play, you spent the rest of the month scouring yellow pages for a hitman to assassinate Graham Taylor. <laughs> Yvonne, you don't understand. Hating the manager and despising his team selection is one of the only pleasures left in supporting England. Every fan likes to think he can do better. Don't remind me I had to type your job application when Bobby Robson resigned. Yeah, and did I even get the courtesy of a reply? Perhaps they thought you were a mite underqualified. I mean, as I recall, the season you were player-manager for the work's third team, Domestic Appliance League Division F... I had a weak squad. The results read, played 11, lost 11. Goals for 3, goals against 57. <laughs> Points, Gary? Yeah. Minus 2. <laughs> Achievement, that isn't it? Finishing the season with fewer points than you started with. My doctor's two points for fielding an unregistered goalie. I know, me. <laughs> so, so their ninth goal was offside. Oh. Look, if this is about me going to Lithuania. Oh, the rubles I... dropped, has it, Gary? I thought we were supposed to be doing more things together. Oh, we are. We started the ballroom dancing. I know. Why don't I come to Lithuania with you? Uh, what? <laughs> Could be quite romantic, Vilnius, in November. Uh, no, you see, because I've only got... Gary, um... I'm only winding you up. <laughs> Go on, clear off before I tie your shoelaces together. Thanks. And don't forget to buy plenty of condoms at the airport. What? You don't think I'm going well, over there? Of course the... not, sir. They're in short supply. Might be able to swap them for some caviar. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he died in his sleep. I'd hate to think he suffered. Probably kept him drugged up with morphine. I doubt he felt the sausage. Yes, but he was all so sudden. Yes. <laughs> Catapulted into our lives in a moment of crisis. Yet somehow he always seemed out of step with his own time. I'm not dead. Oh, Gary, how'd you feel? I'm fine, honest, I'm not dead. Of course you're not, Sam. You've got a badly sprained wrist, concussion, bruising and contusions. <laughs> Well, you were talking as if I was dead. We were talking about Mr Chamberlain. He kicked the bucket on Saturday night. He was out in the fog as well, was he? Hey, you two, former leaders of His Majesty's Government, do not kick buckets. They pass away peacefully in the night. Allow the man some dignity. I don't see why I should. It was because of a appeasers like him and Mr Baldwin that we're in this war. If we'd stopped Hitler back in '36 when he remilitarised the Rhineland... I am not just a pretty face, Gary Sparrow. That's right, son. After all, it wasn't Phoebe who went out in the blackout without a torch. Well, what was it, a hit and run? In a way. It was the ambulance that hit you. What ran you up the hospital? <laughs> you had us all going for a bit. Some of the stuff you're babbling in your sleep. Like what? Hold on. Hi-8 camcorder. Nikam digital stereo. Something about laser, lazy discs. Yeah, well, forget all that. It's, it's top secret. Well, told you. Enough said. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, good to see you on the men. Right, I must pop down the mortuary. My old Cyril usually has a kettle on about now. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd better be on my way as well. Oh, don't be daft. Look at the state of you. That's right, a quack would be wanting to give you the once-over. No, I'm fine, honest. I just... Oh. See, you're in no fit state to go anywhere. You worried your Marilyn will be missing you? Uh, no, she's, she's not expecting me back until tonight. Who's this Marilyn, then? His wife. Well, where are you going to go and see Cyril, then? Right you are. I'll tell you something for nothing, Gary. My heart went off in my mouth when P.C. Deadman told us you'd been run over. Didn't know you cared. Of course you did. Well, I just thought... After last time, you know, when you walked out on me. 
You were entitled to, of course, since you just found out I was still secretly married. Yeah. Well, I uh, know I hit the roof, but I think I've been hasty and I've had a chance to think. And I, well, I realise now that when you used to go on about how after the war people won't be forced to stay in loveless marriages, you weren't only talking about me and Donald. You were talking about you and Marilyn and all. So perhaps we're destined to be together. Destined? Phoebe, do you believe in all that fate stuff? Yes, I do. I believe there's a purpose to life. That it isn't all just a big game of chance. I didn't know you were so deep. There's a lot you've got to learn about me. Here we are again. I've retrieved your personal belongings. Oh, great. If Hold I... your horses. Got to make sure everything is all present and correct. Now, one suit, brown. One shirt, bloodstained. <laughs> one pair of underpants, illustrated. Yeah, all right. I know what I was wearing. Procedures have to be adhered to, son. Please. Now, where was I? One watch, broken. One wallet, brown leather, containing... One five-pound note, two one-pound notes, one ten-shilling note. A picture of a rather glamorous blonde signed, All My Love, Marilyn. Yeah, do you mind? Oh, is that her, then? Can I see? This is the trouble and strife, then. She looks a corker. Yeah, she's, she's American. Oh, well, that explains it. You never get my missus to have her snap taken standing on top of her grating with a skirt blown up round her handbag. <laughs> bit saucy, if you don't mind my saying so. So, um, I'll find Mrs Sparrow at Sir uh, 23 Maidstone Gardens, Cricklewood, will I? Look, Phoebe, that picture was taken a long time ago. Tell you what, I'll be off duty in about half hour. I could uh, pop round there, tell her you're all right. No. No, the, there's no need. Of course there's a need. Poor woman would be distraught. She might need comforting. This, um, grating anywhere near your ass at all? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Grandma. What's wrong? She's ever so glamorous. Oh, I must be bonkers. Why? To think that you might prefer me to her. Don't be silly, Phil. All right, girl. Stop mooning at him and get back down the pub. There's all the tables to scrub down before opening time. Dad! Don't you dad me. Go on, up it. I want a word with young Romeo here. TTFN. Well, you got a devious way with you, I must say. What? She was beside herself when she found out you was married, you two-timing gigolo. But I thought, well, <laughs> at least this way she'll get him out of her system and then blow me, you stage this little accident to win her back. Hold on, stage an accident? I could have been killed. Tommy Rot, you wait till it's foggy and the traffic's all creeping about at five miles an hour, then you walk in front of an ambulance, <laughs> let it strike you a glancing blow. And why would I do that? It's obvious. She's my only daughter. I'm a pub landlord of many years standing, good reputation, fine line of business. You worm your way into her affections, poison her mind against her lawfully wedded spouse, a brave soldier away doing his bit up to his neck in muck and bullets. He's in the desert. Well, all right, then, sand and bullets. <laughs> Either way, when I finally pop my clogs, you intend to move into a nice, comfortable little tenancy. I know what you're up to. You can't fool me. I wasn't born yesterday. Neither was I. <laughs> what are you doing here? I just wondered if Gary might fancy a few bevs. No, he's not home yet. I'll call back tomorrow. You will not. <laughs> Where is Gary? Well, I just presumed he made his own way back. You know, caught a train, changed it to Smolensk for Liverpool Street. <laughs> but didn't you see he wasn't on the plane with you? Well, after a few bison grass vodkas, Elvis could have been sitting next to me and I wouldn't have noticed. <laughs> Don't push your luck, Ron. Now I am angry. What really happened and it's no use covering for him? I can't, Yvonne. He's my mate. You shouldn't ask mates to grass on mates. Spare me this male bonding. But Yvonne... Tell me, otherwise you won't have anything male left to bond with. <laughs> now where the hell is my husband? Well, if he's not here, then he's probably in a Lithuanian prison awaiting trial. 
What? Don't worry. I expect they'll just fine him for indecent exposure, then deport him. Indecent exposure? He'll probably never be able to go back to Lithuania for the rest of his life, but that's no great hardship. The beer's garbage! <laughs> what happened? Well, after the game, we decided to go for a drink with an unusually sophisticated group of supporters from Ashton Underline. <laughs> Unfortunately, we mistook this little museum for a pub, it being rather dark this time of year in the Arctic Circle, and there was a regrettable incident involving a Zippo lighter, a bottle of Damson brandy, and a 700-year-old tapestry. <laughs> Nothing to do with Gary, of course. Consequently, the curator called the riot police, and the last I saw of Gary, he was being chased through the red light district by 17 armed gendarmes wearing nothing but a Union Jack. <laughs> Gary, that is, not the police, obviously. Are you making this up? Yvonne, if I could make this up, I'd be writing Emmerdale Farm. <laughs> Hello yourself. You look miles better. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel miles better. In fact, the doctor said I, I can go home whenever I want. Oh, then why haven't you? Don't fancy going home to your Marilyn then? No, I was just hoping you'd pop in. Oh, well I have. So there you are then, clever dick. Read me like a book, can't you? Cheer up, might never happen. <laughs> Oh, no. That's the trouble. I'd be hell to live with. Always coming and going, unannounced. Spending weeks away, never able to tell you where I've been. Gary, what are you saying? I'm not sure. I thought I'd find you in here. Yeah, well, it is a hospital. I've been run over. I wasn't speaking to you. Phoebe, I thought I forbade you ever to see him again. Oh, don't start all that again, Dad. I will start all that again, Dad. You are cheapening yourself with a married man who's got a wife waiting and worrying for him over in Cricklewood. Not exactly, Eric. Hey? I don't like to have to break this to you, son, but I called in on your Marilyn, who must take one hell of a photograph, cos in a pinny and head scarf she didn't look nothing to write home about. Here. <laughs> yeah. I told her her husband was in hospital when this old king great chap in a submariner's pullover appears in the doorway. Oh, sorry, Grandad. And judging by his carpet slippers, he's got his feet well under the table. Oh, Gary. It's a terrible thing. A woman entertaining strange men in the marital abode, her husband not even away in the services. Well, that's why she's doing it. She's taken up with a submariner, a fighting man, a real man, not some pansy who writes love songs and pretends to be a spy. Dad, Gary's not a pansy. I'm sure he'll be going right round there to sort him out, won't you? I wouldn't if I was you, son. He's a whacking big bloke and beefy with it. Oh. I don't know. I'm away a mere 36 hours. She's moved in her fancy piece. I think I'd like to be on my own for a while. Of course you would, son. Shall I ask the Lady Armanet to come and have a comforting little art to art? No. No, I'll be all right. Phoebe? In a minute, Dad. Well, make sure it is just a minute, all right? You gonna be all right? Yeah. Yeah, once it's sunk in. Oh. Where are you gonna stay tonight? Don't know. Got friends. Oh. So when are we gonna see each other again? Phoebe, I don't know exactly. What are we going to do, Gary? I wish I knew. Well, because now... Yeah. Looks like things are going to be different, eh? How different, Gary? said that all the football hooligans had been put on a train out of the country first thing this morning. Ah, here's the conquering hero now. All right, speak to you later. Hi. 
I see the Lithuanian police gave you a hiding. Good. And I suppose you're really proud of yourself. What do you mean? Ron has told me everything. Honestly, Gary! Oh, well... <laughs> you know how it is. No, I'm sorry. I don't know how it is. I cannot imagine any circumstances in which I would wish to expose myself in the streets in the capital of Lithuania. <laughs> especially in November. So, Ron told you I'd expose myself. Well... Gary! give a monkeys. I'm going round to my sister's for a few hours. See if you can mature into an adult while I'm away, will you? Yeah. <laughs> sparrow, 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 F, sparrow. 17 Thurston Road. Seven. Yes? Um, I was looking for a Mrs. Phoebe Sparrow. We don't want no more journalists round here. The last one nicked the photo album. No, no, I'm not a journalist. I'm just... Well, a sort of friend of the family, I suppose. Huh? Well? It's Gary. Remember? From the war? Marilyn Monroe? Look, it's sort of complicated, but I think we might have got married or something. What is it, Edith? Another ruffian from Wapi? Worse! This young crackhead thinks he's my husband! <laughs> well, don't stand there cackling Phoebe's barrow! Get the gun! if somebody decides to pop round to your granddad's to visit you. Oh, come on, what are the odds on that? Plus, he spent most of the war on submarines. But if I don't marry Phoebe when I'm supposed to... Then why don't you just go round and visit this battling granny, see if she recognises you? I can't do that. The shock could kill her. You're going to have to cover for me. Well, so you can go back and marry Phoebe? No, she thinks I'm already married. To Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> It's the first name that came into my head. <laughs> That's brilliant. Hey, hang about. Next time you go back, if anybody asks, you can show them a picture of your wife. <laughs> oh, my love. Marilyn. There you go. Thanks. So when are you going back? Well, I was thinking. England are playing in Lithuania tomorrow night, right? Now, I could say that you and me have been given tickets. OK. If she asks, I'll cover for you. No, you're actually going to have to go. Well, just in case Stella says something to Yvonne. But I don't want to go to Lithuania. <laughs> It'll cost me a fortune. The beer will be garbage and the results a foregone conclusion. Shock win for plucky Lithuania. <laughs> All right, I'll pay. Eh? If you go, I'll pay. Haven't you ever wanted a Lithuanian stamp in your passport? This is the first time England have played Lithuania, but no one in the England camp is taking the game lightly. Manager Graham Taylor's way. No, I just thought maybe we could take dancing lessons together. Well, it'd give us a shared interest, an excuse. 
Oh, a reason to hold each other more. It might improve our sex life, too. You think it needs improving? Well, I was talking to some of the girls on the course, and they said that the average... They're lying. What are you doing here? No, don't tell me. The Martians have landed and they've sent you to get some change of planet cards. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ron. And that's supposed to make it all better, is it? I mean, what sort of a practical joker gets me to print him a set of wartime papers, says he can take me through to the past, and then leaves me stranded in the East End looking like a right div? <laughs> the last thing this world needs, and I mean the very last thing, is another Jeremy Beadle. <laughs> I mean, where did you disappear to? And don't say the Blitz, otherwise you'll be experiencing a sudden blackout. Look, I know you're not going to believe anything I say. I just wanted to thank you for not telling Yvonne. Yeah, well, I nearly did. But I don't believe in grassing on pals. Even ex-pals. Look, I know... Actually, brilliant. It was fantastic. I loved it. And I got a terrific reaction when I read my dissertation. Oh, yeah? It was entitled Fantasy, Reality and Obsession. A case study. It wasn't about me by any chance, was it? Asked her husband with a mixture of pride and trepidation. Oh, you're so vain. Although, since we're talking about people with a tenuous grip on reality, how long have you been cuddling your spiff suit? Oh, no, I wasn't cuddling it. I was trying to get rid of it. But it seems the George Raff look is not yet de rigueur in the third world. Oh? Huh? Does that mean the party's off? What party? The surprise 1940s theme party you said you were going to throw for my birthday. Yeah, worse. Not much of a surprise now, is it? I know, I'm sorry, I blew it. I've just been so wound up with my course. But now I've got through this stage, I can relax a bit more. We can do more things together. I can share your interests more. What are they this week? I'll knock it off, Yvonne. No, I mean it. I can understand why the 40s appeal so much. It's a time of certainties. A time when people knew what they were doing and why they were doing it. Mm. A time when men wore hats and women dyed their legs with cold tea. You're sending me up again, aren't you? Only a bit. And that dancing was really nice. You know when we did the foxtrot? Oh. Or the quick step? Or whatever it was. Mm. I like it when the man takes the lead. Once in a while. You're going to change your course from psychology to Paso Doble, are you? Don't be so prickly, Gary. No, I just thought maybe we could take dancing lessons together. It's brilliant. Hey, hang about. Next time you go back. If anybody asks, you can show them a picture of your wife. <laughs> oh, my love. Marilyn. There you go. Thanks. So when are you going back? Well, I was thinking. England are playing in Lithuania tomorrow night, right? Now, I could say that you and me have been given tickets. OK. If she asks, I'll cover for you. No, you're actually going to have to go. Well, just in case Stella says something to Yvonne. But I don't want to go to Lithuania. <laughs> It'll cost me a fortune. The beer will be garbage and the results a foregone conclusion. Shock win for plucky Lithuania. <laughs> All right, I'll pay. Eh? If you go, I'll pay. Haven't you ever wanted a Lithuanian stamp in your passport? This is the first time England have played Lithuania, but no one in the England camp is taking the game lightly. Manager Graham Taylor is waiting to see if Paul Gascoigne passes a late fitness test on a stomach muscle strain. Yeah, of course, by stuffing himself with too much pasta and Newcastle Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Still here? Uh, yeah, yeah, just off. I'm gonna pick up Ron on my way to the airport. I can't believe you're going. It's only a football match, I'm not defecting. Gary, the last time you went to see England play, you spent the rest of the month scouring yellow pages for a hitman to assassinate Graham Taylor. <laughs> Yvonne, you don't understand. Hating the manager and despising his team. Go on, clear off before I tie your shoelaces together. Thanks. And don't forget to buy plenty of condoms at the airport. What? You don't think I'm going well, over there? Of course the... not, sir. They're in short supply. Might be able to swap them for some caviar. <laughs> <laughs> Look out! I 
hope he died in his sleep. I'd hate to think he suffered. Probably kept him drugged up with morphine. I doubt he felt a sausage. Yes, but he was all so sudden. Yes. <laughs> Catapulted into our lives in a moment of crisis. It's somehow he always seemed out of step with his own time. I'm not dead. Oh, Gary, how'd you feel? I'm fine, honest, I'm not dead. Of course you're not, Sam. You've got a badly sprained wrist, concussion, bruising and contusions. Well, you were talking as if I was dead. We were talking about Mr Chamberlain. He kicked the bucket on Saturday night. He was out in the fog as well, was he? Hey, you two, former leaders of His Majesty's Government, do not kick buckets. They pass away peacefully in the night. Allow the man some dignity. I don't see why I should. It was because of appeasers like him and Mr Baldwin that we're in this war. If we'd stopped Hitler back in 36 when he remilitarised the Rhineland... I am not just a pretty face, Gary Sparrow. That's right, son. After all, it wasn't Phoebe who went out in the blackout without a torch. Gary, it's safe to come down now. I've finished moving the furniture. Ta-da! <laughs> I think a card came through from one of those 24-hour psychiatrists. Low call-out charge, no brain too small. Well, I'll just, just hide it for a laugh and stuff. Well, it's worked. <laughs> Gary, why do you always plunge into everything with this 150% over-the-top attitude? Oh, I don't know. It probably wasn't breastfed long enough. <laughs> or too long. Or too much from one side. Or... Oh, well, that explains one thing. Explains what? It doesn't matter. I'm not complaining. Oh. <laughs> They make synchronised swimmers look depressed. <laughs> Go on, then. Follow yeah. me. Right, right. That foot. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Go on, then. Do, 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 do. No, you've got to smile. You've got to go. Do no. <laughs> <laughs> you come here often? Sometimes. But sometimes I have to fake it. <laughs> what do you do for a living? I'm an obsessive. Oh. But I'm hoping to be promoted to a psychotic. You? Assistant personnel manager and part-time sex goddess. Really? Mm -hmm. Why would you do that then? Evenings and weekends? Whenever I get the chance, really. Oh. oh. That was super. Now, let's all try a basic tango. Mm. Fancy it. Well, at least this way she'll get him out of her system and then blow me, you stage this little accident to win her back. Hold on, stage an accident? I could have been killed. Tommy Rot, you wait till it's foggy and the traffic's all creeping about at five miles an hour, then you walk in front of an ambulance, <laughs> let it strike you a glancing blow. And why would I do that? It's obvious. She's my only daughter. I'm a pub landlord of many years standing, good reputation, fine line of business. You worm your way into her affections, poison her mind against her lawfully wedded spouse, a brave soldier away doing his bit up to his neck in muck and bullets. He's in the desert. Well, all right, then, sand and bullets. <laughs> Either way, when I finally pop my clogs, you intend to move into a nice, comfortable little tenancy. I know what you're up to. You can't fool me. I wasn't born yesterday. Neither was I. <laughs> what are you doing here? I just wondered if Gary might fancy a few bevs. No, he's not home yet. I'll call back tomorrow. You will not. <laughs> Where is Gary? Well, I just presumed he made his own way back. You know, caught a train, changed it to Smolensk for Liverpool Street. <laughs> Fancy a basic tango? I bought another video too. Oh. Well, I don't want to watch a martial arts film. It's not martial, my little dyslexic. It's marital. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. You're after a bit of part-time work, eh? I might. I'll, uh... I'll just go upstairs and change into something a little more comfortable, shall I? Oh, yeah. Oh. As long as it's not your acrylane cardi and your carpet slippers. <laughs> but the plucky old age pensioner saw off the raiders by threatening them with her husband's World War II revolver. When we asked 80 year old Phoebe Sparrow from Bethnal Green how she felt, she said, I lived through the Blitz. A couple of hooligans aren't going to get the better of me. Ron, this changes everything, don't you see? Why? 80-year-old Phoebe Sparrow. It must mean we got married. 
Not necessarily. She may have married somebody else with your surname. Or maybe she never met anybody else like you and started using your name in a wistful, nay, poignant attempt to keep alight the dying embers of your brief, unfulfilled relationship. But say, we did get married. Back in the 1940s. If I don't go back, I'm changing the course of history. But if you pursue that argument, you risk changing the course of history every time you do go back, don't you? Well, not really. This is my Grandpa Garrett's name on my ration book. So if anyone does check up, at least there's a Mr G Sparrow on the 